tell you about an ancient Chinese secret. There is something within the three M's that you must have to have a successful business, okay? And we're gonna talk about what the three M's mean in terms of this broadcast, but specifically, we're gonna talk about the health of your business, how to really run your business intelligently, and that's why we're gonna be integrating in, talks about the brain here a little bit, and we're gonna learn a little bit about something that will help you as well if you want to be smarter and really measure just basically, uh, ba basically your intelligence or also really put a lot of intelligence in anything you do here. So I want to go ahead and give a big round of applause to Donna and Gary. So if you're out there, go ahead and clap where you're at, unless you're driving, of course, all right? So anyway, um, we are very excited to have you here over in Stockton, California. And I want to just acknowledge the fact that in Hume's Emotion, we talk a lot about stroke. And stroke, usually people mistaken it to be, you know, happening in the heart. It actually happens in the brain, right? And it's, there's a lot of interesting information here. But what are you going to be talking today about over at uh, Healing's Emotion, the event there? Thank you, Jim. We're happy to be here. And it's all about the cardiovascular system and how it's all connected. You can't divorce the head from the body and the heart. It's all connected together. And in order to have a healthy cardiovascular system, all of the little hot tips and tricks that we are going to talk about today here on this station and also over at the hospital are going to be very helpful, user-friendly pieces of advice that every single person who hears this can benefit. Great. And Gary, what do you specialize in? What do you usually um, educate <coughs> people on? Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> my background's in uh, biofeedback and neurofeedback, and we measure the brain waves. And I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, biofeedback at all. Uh, uh, you know, I usually saw those machines that measure yeah, the biorhythm yeah, or something yeah, like that. that what, what they are is we uh, take a measure, say your hand temperature, and we have, hook your hand up to a little thermometer, and you try and raise your temperature or lower your temperature. And you do that mentally, but uh, you're not quite sure how you do it. Uh, it just happens. And it, gradually you begin to learn, oh, well, if I think that way, then my hand gets warmer. Or if I think hmm. another way, my hand gets cooler. Uh, that actually happens. That actually happens. Okay. And, uh, you know, in ter terms of Chinese medicine, uh -huh. uh, that's very, very uh, useful in that that idea of that energy or that chi. Mm -hmm. So as that energy or chi follows your mind, you know, your mind is thinking about, okay, I want my energy to flow into my hand. The blood follows that energy and your hand gets warmer. Great. Right along with circulation, all of this function as like one big ecosystem, right? Absolutely. Totally. So it's really, it's really important to understand, you know, however we function in life, it affects other things. They have a thing called the butterfly effect. And I want you to think about your business as we're talking about it a little bit. Have you guys heard of the butterfly effect? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about what the butterfly effect is? Well, it's all related to quantum physics and the chaos. Theory. Wow, that's getting really huge. I didn't expect so to get that. When, big that words, big. I'm not when sure. There, okay, great. When there is a butterfly flapping its wings right. in the Amazon, uh -huh. it can set up a little vibration and a frequency and a little ripple effect, like throwing a pebble into a pond. Yeah. And then that spreads out, and it's the dominoes that get knocked over because of that butterfly ripple that can change all the way around the planet to a, where it could cause a hurricane to happen on the opposite side of the planet. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. So I know a lot of things, you know, just in business, you know, whatever you do, however you think, your thought process, I know it will affect other aspects of your business, right? Yes. It, it, it's, it, it, there's a reverberation, kind of like that ripple you talked about, right? Yes. And it's kind of like, have you ever had a duck? No. Duck. Have you ever had duck? I've had, I I've mean, had, I've eaten duck. Yeah. Eaten okay. Duck yeah, eaten duck. Just had one as a eaten pet. Duck. Eaten duck. Okay. That's interesting perspective. Okay. <laughs> but no, no, eaten, you know, we're, we're okay. Asian, so we love to eat almost everything. Right? Okay. But, but the whole thing is, is that it's kind of like that ripple effect. When you have one piece of duck, it's like a Lay's potato chip. You know what? You can't just have but one, right? Okay. okay. And so the whole thing is, is it's that ripple effect, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have one, you enjoy it, it starts moving you to 
get another piece. And by the way, the best piece is a drumstick because the skin, if it's uh, if it's cooked properly, um, it's, it's awesome. Well, you but come, anyway. You okay. come from a long line of restaurant background. Right? Yeah. Well, I come from a long line of just loving to eat. <laughs> and I heard that eating is important to our health. Absolutely. But, but the ripple effect in all sincerity is so very important. I want us to think about what we're trying to accomplish with our life, our business. And we're going to have some great discussion here about things that make you go, mmm. And the ripple effect is so very important because understanding how your action can affect other things, can actually affect other people, is also very important to understanding a few different things just about how um, how business operates, what makes things successful, what makes them not successful. But I wanted to ask you here in terms of the, uh, the circulation, some of the things you're going to be talking about today. Tell us a little bit about just your specialty and why it's important for people to understand this interaction amongst the, the brain and just our whole system. Well, the whole universe operates on frequencies. Everything in the universe is based on wavelength and waveforms and all the way through the whole solar system and the universe. It all relates to how light travels and how sound travels and how you can look at an ocean and see the waves going. And inside of our bodies, we have all this body electric, this whole electrical system, which is related to the waves of our heart, how the heart goes through an electrical system that is very powerful, and then how that sends waves of information to the brain, and then how that makes everything work together so that it operates as a complete integrated whole. And what we're all about with cardiovascular health is to create the neuroalchemy of the whole system working together in harmony. Now you smile. You sound, it seems like you're just so the neuroalchemy. Yeah. I like the way you say that. Well, it's magic. Yeah. It's like taking a whole bunch of ingredients, mixing them all together, and then coming up with gold. Right. Well, you know, it's amazing if anything affects that system. Like if there's even just a couple of air bubbles, that can really cause right. somebody to go through yeah. some sort of a heart attack or, right. or other things. Is that correct? Yes. And also every other little thing is an effect. It's like the butterfly flapping its mm -hmm. wings. If you have a little plaque built up into the arteries mm -hmm. and it blocks something or it breaks loose and it lodges in the brain or in the heart, there you go. You've got a stroke or a heart attack happening because of something that broke loose out of the arteries that were stuck on the sides. Yeah, so well, you know, it's important to understand the interaction of all these together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you know, I know we're going to be talking with a group uh, later today on stroke you know, just stroke prevention. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you said something pretty important about the whole ecosystem of body. Would it be proper to say, Absolutely. say that? And so what part do you think that we, that, that we should really pay attention to that we can help to be able to maintain good health? What part? Well, I would, I would say your heart to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Donna was alluding to is the fact that our heart puts out an energy field. And it's actually an electromagnetic field, which influences all the people around us. So it's a subtle energy, mm -hmm. so that as your heart comes into a certain type of coherence, that is, it's beating in a certain way, which is uh, regulated by your breath, that also entrains with the person next to you. So if we're sitting, you know, like three feet, of, feet apart here, as our hearts come into sync, we begin to, you know, mellow out depending on what the mm. heart's doing. Sometimes the heart is looking like uh, the heartbeat is all over the place. Yeah. And that can be related to anxiety or worry. But then when it calms down, it gets into a nice rhythm, a nice flow. Mm. And so everybody calms down and they start looking, uh, you know, listening to each other and actually hearing what the other person is saying. This entrains the brain rhythm as well. And our brains, and we actually measure this, we actually be able to see this, our brains begin to synchronize all the rhythms of the brain. So, you know, these subtle energies are going on mm. all the time between people. So it's very much a fact that we can be contagious with our own inner calm and peace. We can transmit to the people around us and actually go viral in a good way. Yeah. 
You know, one thing I, I wanted to mention, you brought up something that was really uh, interesting to me, and I want to ask you out there what you think of this. I heard, now, now before you answer this, I heard that if two people like give a hug, sometimes a heart-to-heart, -heart, the hearts will actually synchronize. Now, those of you that are listening, do you believe that's true or false? Is that fact or fiction that the hearts will actually synchronize when you're maybe hugging somebody? Um, and, you know, just in terms of what's going on there, you know, if it is or isn't. But, uh, all right, you have a chance to think about that. All right, now, let's see, who would, who would like to take that? Let's take uh, heart rhythm for 100, Jim. <laughs> okay, so who would like to uh, share about that? Well, the heart rhythms are highly contagious. So mm -hmm. within something like 15 feet away, the person over on the other side of the room can pick up your heart rhythm and start to synchronize with it like grandfather clocks ticking mm -hmm. together. And so you can actually influence it. It really works well on horses, too. If you are a horseback rider, which a lot of people down here in the Delta mm -hmm. area are, uh -huh. You can get on a horse and you can have the correct heart rhythms and the horse will pick up on it and it will let you be the one in charge. Otherwise, if your heart is out of sync and the horse is actually in better sync than you are, the horse will not take your advice and say, go left, go right, stop, go It'll just say, no, I'm the alpha here. I'm going to keep going the way I want to because you wow. are not in coherence. And so I don't have to obey your commands. Yeah. Well, you know, why, why is that significant to understand the rhythm and the fact that we can synchronize? Because this is something we don't really talk about that much. No. You know, and I think, I think it's important. But any thoughts for you guys why it's important, why we might uh, want to understand well, it, this? It's because when we do that, we become more efficient, more creative, uh, more open to new ideas, uh, better mm -hmm. able to um, socialize, you know, yeah. to be able to communicate mm -hmm. with other people. Uh, so it, we tune in to the other person. So it's like that, that idea of picking up the vibes. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what uh, happens when our hearts get into that kind of rhythm and then we pick up the heart rhythm of someone else. Right. As Don was saying even about horses, it's not just the heart rhythm. In fact, there's a, an interesting study that was done with horses uh, and heart rhythms where mm -hmm. they taught a woman, a horse handler for her horses, uh, to get her heart into this kind of coherent rhythm. And then she went out, she had four horses, and she went out, and as when she was in this rhythm, three of the horses picked it up and came over wow. to her. And, you know, just kind of stood there and, you know, nuzzled her and, and looked at her. The third, the fourth horse was kind of like, I'm on an off day today. I'm not doing <laughs> anything, you know. And right. He stayed over on the other side. <clears throat> so this is, uh, you know, something that can be picked up. But we also see this in brain rhythms. Uh, if a writer has a good organized brain rhythm, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, we won't go into all the details of what that means. Right. But uh, if... If the rider has a good organized brain rhythm and the horse doesn't, he will organize or she will organize the brain rhythm of that horse. We've measured it. Wow. And so, but the other, on the other hand, uh, if the horse, if the um, rider doesn't have a good brain rhythm, that horse, as Donna was saying, would just go like, oh, you know. You don't this know is a waste doing. of time. It's a waste of time. You know, I'm going to go eat some grass. You know, right, like, right. I can't even train this human. Right. right. That's so horses, horses are actually the most <clears throat> natural, largest, most effective biofeedback device there are. That's the reason why children, Seriously. children who have uh, had some challenges, whether they be autistic or ADD or um, brain damaged in any way or Adults who have had strokes and who have any kind of compromise, if they go and do horseback riding therapy, they can get all kinds of healing and benefits and calming and soothing for their, their nervous system that needs to have that calming effect in order to heal. Well, you know, it's very interesting. You know, in terms of uh, in terms of just healing and stuff, I heard dogs have the same effect. Exactly. But horses actually have a stronger effect. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Yes, they are. They're bigger, so they put out more of an impact. Uh -huh. Like I have gone swimming in the ocean with humpback whales, 
Wow. And really close by. Uh-huh. You know, we're talking just a few feet away. Wow. And their hearts and their brain waves are so massive. Mm-hmm. And as they emanate out through the waves of the water, mm-hmm. they penetrate you when you're in the water snorkeling or scuba diving with them. And you actually feel that rhythm in your body like a drum. It feels like a drum. Right. And when you come back out of the water, you're totally transformed because you've been entrained to the biggest brains on the planet. You know, this is this is very significant. I want to talk about one of the M's and things that make you go mm, in business, and that is marketing. And marketing is really important because we talked about just a little bit about the butterfly effect, right? And marketing is all about creating that ripple. It's not about that one-time event. I tell people, and you might want to uh, consider this, uh, write this down if you like out there listening, but, you know, it does deal with duration, how long something you put out is, let's say a broadcast. Um, Also, it deals with frequency, how often you put it out there, and then the content, the power of the content itself. So basically, again, the duration, the frequency, and also the power of the message is very important in terms of marketing. But one of the things that's really important is also the synergistic way you bring the marketing things together. See, I'd make the connection here somehow. (laughs) But really, when you think about it, and you do a lot of, I see a lot of people doing a lot of different kind of scattered marketing, and sometimes that can play a role for frequency. But it really has to be brought together in a unified fashion to be able to create a good end result, right? Uh, otherwise, you have not just uh, uh, marketing that, that has a message. You have marketing that is a mess. And so it's really important. Is that one of the M's? Yeah, that's one of the M's. It could be. But really, marketing is so very key to understanding how you uh, want to be successful. Even in life, I will prove it to you. I will prove it to you how important marketing is. Now, I, I don't know your story. How did you guys meet by chance? Oh, we were introduced by a mutual friend. Okay, great. What impressed you about him? Oh, the first thing I saw with Gary is I looked at him and I went, this man really is a dignified, professorial, intelligent type. And I was attracted to his brain. <laughs> My gosh, you know, I thought you were a dignified, what was that word again? Professorial. <laughs> professorial type. Right. That's exactly what ran through my mind. As well. that's, I'm that's sure it. that's what ran through all of your minds sitting out there, right? Well, that's great, right? Well, because right. he taught at college level right. for, you know, 20 years. So, right. so basically had a lot of that experience of standing in front of an audience and telling them the facts. Right. And well, you better do it. Right, right. <laughs> well, and, and what impressed, uh, uh, what impressed uh, you about her? Wow, so many things. Um, we had the same uh, interests, mm-hmm. and so we could sit and talk for mm-hmm. a really long time right. about strange, you know, topics right. like heart rhythms and brain rhythms mm-hmm. and et cetera. And uh, she had a background in uh, naturopathic uh, medicine, and so she knew a lot about body work. And at that time, I was also studying uh, body work for my biofeedback training. And so we begin to exchange ideas there, and, and I begin to give her some training, and she began to give me some of her body work massage. Uh, so, you know, we, we clicked on a, a lot of different levels at the same time. Great. Well, you know, so the connection was there, right? And I think the message was there in terms of what you got, because you're a dignified professorial person, yes, right? Yes, totally. <laughs> and uh, she just gave you great, uh, great, great, um, uh, I, I think she delivered in terms of massages. That's good, you know, right? Yeah. Body work. Body work. So that's great. But, you know, the whole thing is, is that, you know, the important thing is in terms of in anything, even in establishing a relationship, how important is do you think frequency is in terms of connecting? The frequency of the waves or the frequency of how often you see each other? Both. Okay. Uh (laughs) Well, we saw each other almost every day because uh, Gary worked downstairs from where I was upstairs, and he'd pop over and bring me some article or something of interest. And this was when we were just friends, and this went on for about a year before we ever went on a date. This was 17 years ago. Yeah. And so that frequency of being on the wavelength of what we were both interested in was the thing that led us down the same path where we decided that we would be more effective together than either one of us could be in a single line. Right. 
And, you know, this is really important, you know, as you're putting out a message out there, make sure it's a good message, right? Um, and you could, you too can be professorial. <laughs> that's always a good message. But, but then the frequency is so very important because that's what gives people a chance to course correct or engage, disengage, whatever they choose to do. But the frequency, if it's at the right rhythm, if it connects, is so very important, right? That's the, one of the things is about the frequency, right? Right. Now, about the duration, right? Have you guys had a chance to stay with each other for a whole week, just weeks at a time? Uh, we live together and we're married and That's we awesome. actually see each other every day, all day long and work out of the home and also travel together and teach workshops all over the world. Right. So, yeah, we're great partners when it comes to compatibility yeah. and harmony and peace and lovingness yeah. all uh, all mixed together along with all of the brain waves that are working. Right. They're, they're working really well. So I'd say you two have a need to have that person around as well. Is that correct? Yeah, duration yeah. is really important. Yeah. And you know, and for some people, believe it or not, I'd say uh, the vast majority, that's my personal opinion, um, they wouldn't necessarily want to be seeing the person 24 7 all the time forever you know but i think it's great because when you find that person that's right in rhythm that works so the whole thing is you know just definitely take into account the characters of the person what their needs and and and, and requirements are right but that's where you know i would say his marketing worked pretty well right i don't know who was marketing to who we <laughs> right. were we were both just um, really enjoying each other's company i think it was very mutual right well, all this stuff happens in the background, you know? Yeah. But the whole thing is, is that, you know, the whole thing is, is really engaging, really connecting with the people. And, you know, there's a lot of different people with a lot of different things they're looking for and really engage people with what they are trying to engage with, not what you're trying to send the message. And I would say there is a common uh, flaw in terms of humans and marketing and business. And that's when somebody is wanting something, but you give them something else. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, women, you probably know this. I'm, I'm sure she likes to be heard, right? Oh, totally. And, and men like to solve problems. And a common mistake that some men make, right? I'm not saying us, but <laughs> some men make is... Present, they, present company excluded, right? <laughs> that's right, right. You know, they try to solve a problem when all somebody wants, all somebody wants is for somebody to, all somebody wants is for somebody to listen. Is that correct? And... It's really important to understand, let's see, as we're, okay. It's really important to understand just the importance of really paying attention, you know, to what's going on in any dynamic relationship, your business, but also to your body as well, right? Absolutely. Bring it full circle and stuff as well, right? Right. But I think this is really great just to be able to talk about just, you know, different aspects of the body, the whole ecosystem of the body and i know you have some great things that also you talk about in terms of biofeedback and stuff too right we see those waves right and exactly. they used to call those uh, feedback right the kind of feedback uh, graphs and stuff um mm -hmm. biofeedback yeah right well actually the you know some the <clears throat> people who are familiar with the virtual reality wearing the yeah. virtual goggles mm -hmm. uh now they're combining all of that biofeedback and neurofeedback into the games so that you can actually put this goggle on and be in a 3D world and your brain rhythms and your heart rhythms will drive the game that's going on. So you're actually controlling it with your body. Wow. So that's, that's coming down the road, this it's whole happening. biotechnology. Wow, that's pretty interesting. So in the new economy, we're going to see a lot more of this in terms yeah, of Yeah, it's just, called uh, biohacking. Yeah, biohacking. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of it called that. Well, you know, in the Side Hustle Business Marketplace, we're talking about the way we do business in the new economy. Uh, biohacking is really interesting. And just there's a lot of things out there. And one, one other thing we have, to, um, we have to really understand is we have to stay current and contemporary with the way people are doing business. It used to be in the older way of doing business, and there is a time and place, right, where basically you write a business plan, you spend a lot of time on that business plan, you make sure you check, make sure all the I's are, do uh, I's are dotted, right. uh, T's, T's are crossed, crossed. <laughs> and, and then you start to actually deploy, you create that solid foundation. Mm -hmm. Well, in today's new economy, certain companies, by the time you get that done, they've already developed it and moved on mm -hmm. because so many people are just implementing immediately. They do have a foundation in what they're building 
off from. So I'm not saying don't have a plan. But it's really interesting how so many people, the new, the new way of doing things, the new normal is let's just go do it. Let's see what we learn. Let's go ahead and course correct and let's go ahead and adjust and then try it again. You know, And it's very interesting. What are your thoughts about that? Well, actually what uh, happens is that people get into the state of flow. And flow is this state, think about a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just sitting there, they're riffing with the other people around them. This is a particular brainwave state that is highly creative. And it allows the both hemispheres of the brain to work together. Mm -hmm. So that what they've found is that CEOs, who are the most effective and the ones that uh, actually develop their business better than anyone else, are the most innovative, the people who can get into flow, who can get into these kind of peak experiences more often than anyone else, uh, and they have these intuitions about which direction the market's going and mm -hmm. when it's going and where it's going, uh, and they just follow those gut feelings. Well, those gut feelings come out of being in sync with your own body and being in sync with your mind so that you get into these flow states. So there's a really important uh, aspect there that you're in harmony uh, with your with your business, you know, if you really enjoy what you're doing, uh, like jazz musicians right. or whatever it may be, uh, people get into those states uh, when they're when they're working in their business as well. In fact, I was uh, talking to um, a woman not too long ago, who she she did a lot of meditation. Okay, she's a very experienced meditator, mm -hmm. but she hated doing her taxes. And she said, I can see that yeah, she, meditation or taxes, tax, right? You know, what do we want to do? When it came of? down to that, it was uh -huh. like, okay, which am I going to do here? Well, she sat down one night and got into flow with mm -hmm. her, with her taxes. She said five hours just went by in a snap. She didn't know what she'd done, but she said, all of a sudden, all these papers were just stacked up and neatly done. Right. And after it was all over with, she was going like, wow, that was easy. Uh, and that's what happens when you get into these flow states. Yeah. And you, so this is something that we try to teach people how to do, mm -hmm. is to get into these kinds of mental states and physiological states that are conducive to the flow. When you're five times more effective, you could just go to work on Monday and be done for the whole week. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, they've, they've actually, I mean, they've done studies mm -hmm. on this, and they've found that people who are in flow, in business, accomplish approximately five times more than when they're not in flow. So, wow. so our career that we do and that we offer to people is to help people hack flow states. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty powerful thinking about that. And, you know, this goes on to the uh, second M I wanted to address, and that's the moments, right? We have marketing makes a successful business. That's important. Moments. Really, there's a few different reasons why I bring that up. I think this is great. We talked about flow, being in the moment of whatever you're mm -hmm. doing, a very direct connection there. And... You know, I know what you're saying is that really being in that moment or being in flow is really important to increase productivity. Is that correct? Totally. Yeah. But how, what else does that do for you just neurologically and everything else in terms of balance? Well, what I love to talk about are all of the internal chemistry factories that we have in our bodies, that our bodies are like the best pharmaceutical manufacturing company we can have. And we carry that capacity to create the most delicious and even possibly addictive chemicals that are really good for us that are coming from our own neurology, the neurochemicals, the, um, the kinds of uh, juices that are uh, made by our adrenal glands and all of the other hormones that work together. And when we get into these flow states, we're actually going through a cycle of each one of the brain waves creating a better, another sequence of those neurochemicals that go around a full cycle through every aspect of stimulation and then relaxation and then recreation and mm -hmm. then rebooting of the brain so that as we go around that cycle, we're going through a, almost an anti-aging reversal process where we're getting younger inside and more effective and more um, more contented. So it's a science of happiness. So where does happiness come from? Well, I've heard that uh, happiness is really peace in motion. Okay, that's a great that's a great way to look at it. So if someone is at peace internally, but that manifests outside, it looks like happiness. 
but sometimes when you're at peace, that sort of happiness at rest. Yeah. Happiness mm-hmm. at rest. Right. So peace can be happiness at rest, and happiness can be peace in motion. Okay. You know, that's putting a lot together here. Where would you put joy in that? Well, joy is part of that happiness mm-hmm. equation. Uh, you know, the if I can get a bit technical here. Sure. Uh, when you start talking about the brain, there's an area of the brain called a precuneus. It's, and it's precuneus. actually a precuneus. And look that up on Google. It's actually on both sides of the brain. And what they've found is that people who are very happy, who have a set point, now this is another thing from genetics, is that you have a set point for happiness that you're born with. Uh huh. So almost 50% of your happiness is genetic. Wow. So, but what that seems to relate to is the thickness of this precuneus on the right hemisphere. Mm-hmm. And the thicker it is, the happier you are. So we don't know at the moment whether you're just born that way or if you can do different exercises such as meditation and different kinds of work that they uh, have out there. There's schools of happiness now, uh-huh. positive psychology. Uh, so maybe that helps you to actually thicken that precuneus so that you're happier just naturally. So you may have a potential there. Let's say we have a potential to, yes. to a certain level of happiness and that this kind of uh, training might help. Wow, wow. And, How- and I also have some tricks from ancient medicine from the past, like Chinese acupuncture that's been around for 5,000 years. Right. And the way you do that is instead of having to stick needles into yourself or go to an acupuncturist, instead of doing that, you just know where the places are that you need to put the needles, and instead of needling it, you just tap on it. So you tap that's where on tapping this. comes from. That's where the EFT, mm-hmm. the emotional freedom technique mm-hmm. tapping comes yeah. from, is those acupuncture meridians. And they're very simple and easy. It's over the eyebrow, on the side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, on the upper lip, on the lower, uh, on the chin, just below your lower lip, on the collarbone, under your arm, and the top of your head, and also right here on the side of your hand. So if you memorize those locations, which are easy to find by just Googling emotional freedom technique, meridian-based tapping, you can go and do that, and it will raise your happiness quotient and your joy and your bliss and your neurochemicals just by tapping for a minute or two. Right. Well, Edwin Edeberry, the the chief happiness officer of the Happy Neighborhood Project, you need to... uh, 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 learn that if you haven't already, and he he always uh, he has a program that instills happiness. Mm-hmm. He's actually acknowledged by the United Nations, and also he has a TEDx talk as well, Edwin okay. Edeberry. So that's really interesting, you know. And you know, as we talk about just these things, I, I hope that we strive in everything we do that we know what we're really trying to accomplish. Or as that new adventure uh, movie says, you know, we understand our end game and you know, it really is about being happy. I mean, who doesn't really want to be happy, right? Being in the moment, being happy, flowing with all of these are just great things that will help you be better as a person excelling your personal success, whether it be on a personal level or on a business level as well, just getting everything to flow as well. A merry heart does good like medicine. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, you know, it's very interesting. We talk a lot about the heart, the brain, the heart actually being filled with emotion, the brain actually being filled with thought, right? And so before we conclude with our last point, uh, is there anything else you want us to know about what we talked about here today? I want to say one thing about the frequencies of the whole entire universe and how it affects this planet that we live on, is that all of those frequencies coming from ab- above and from below, from the volcanic activity in the Earth, mm-hmm. are basically the same frequency if you measure a, an electrode into the Earth It's the frequency of what we have in our brains that's in that theta, theta rhythm. It's the slow frequency 3.14. It's called the Schumann frequency. So all we have to do to upgrade our own happiness is to go outside, take our shoes off, put our feet down in the earth, and get earthed and grounded, and we will bring, bring that theta rhythm, that theta rhythm up through our whole body. It will help to down... It'll basically Mm -hmm. release all of the static electricity we get from too much Wi-Fi and other electricity that's a polluting 
uh, polluting our bodies, it'll release that and we'll gather up the energy of the earth and it will help a lot of things, including heart and circulatory system. You know, I, I learned to appreciate a lot of this because for some, uh, some that are analytic, technical, maybe it's a little woo-woo or whatever, you know. No, it's but, proven. But, it's, but it, it's I know very... there are proven things, you know. And I want you to think about this, you know. It's really interesting because I will tell you, it's a true statement. You bring out an ice cream cone. Who doesn't really smile or feel good when they see an ice cream cone? You know what I mean? Putting your feet just on the grass, putting your toes into it, really burying in there. You know, I've tried it. It's really calming. It really helps you, again, be at the moment. You know what I mean? Or get and into a river or a lake or go swimming in the ocean. All of that is very grounding and it'll... It'll just kind of reboot your whole body and mind. Right. That in and of itself is a real great tip because, you know, thank you for reminding us and just sharing with us about what is going on there. Because in life, I think we agree, we're becoming more of a stressful society. I don't know why, or I do know why. A lot of technology, bombardment of a lot of different things. We have our phone, entitlement. Hey, where are you? I tried to call you uh, three or four different times. There was a time actually where we actually had to think, plan, be thoughtful, be intentional about what we did because if we were gonna meet someone at a theater and they weren't there, you kinda had to just wait <laughs> because we couldn't just pick up the phone. We have a lot of modern day conveniences, but then they've created an expectation that we have of each other, an entitlement of we should know now as well. But just to really get grounded, put our feet in the sand, in the earth, jump in some water, preferably not with sharks. Right? And, and turn your phones off every turn once, your phones in off once in a while. Just get a while. break from them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Simon Sinek actually has a great talk about how sometimes when they go off, there, there's a reason why. He talked about how cell phones, we can become addictive. It has created an addictive nature in us. Right. And they say, he even brought up, you know, you know you're addicted when the first thing you think about when you wake up is what? What, to go look at your phone. Yeah, right, what, who, I wonder who left me a message, you know? Yeah. Uh, kids, they, they wrestle a lot with depression because now they're being trained, hey, if I need to, if I, I need attention or I don't feel good, rather than working through those feelings, they could just say hi, 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 hi to several people, get a response, and then it triggers some uh, dopamine, 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 dopamine in the mind. Which is very addictive. Yeah, and, and that's where it comes from. Now, there's nothing wrong with feeling great, you know? And being in the moment, especially if you have a great catch like each other, right? <laughs> but the whole thing is, is that they learned also, a lot of people are not learning how to cope with real life situations because they're being fed all this dopamine and stuff as well. But take that time, shut off mm -hmm. the technology and really just enjoy the moment. Take a walk in nature and let nature take a walk through you and, yeah. and inform your frequencies with Mother Earth. The Japanese refer to it as forest bathing. Wow. Cor what is it they call forest it? Forest bathing. Forest bathing. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Just go for a walk in a forest. Anywhere you can find some big trees. Go hug a tree. Right. So, um, you know, what, what final thoughts do you have here for us? Well, I, I have to agree 100% with, uh, with Donna that uh, if you want to get into flow, and you're working in business, you have to walk out of that store, that shop, that in front of that computer, and you have to go outside for a while and forest bathe, walk on the beach, uh, you know, do a little meditation, and this will do bring a you. Dance. Yeah, get exactly. Down and <laughs> I'll get me like, singing here. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, you're, you're trying, but I, you know, uh, it's dangerous to get me singing. So. Yeah. Uh, so, so find a place in the delta where you can put your toes in the right, water. Exactly. So if you can, can you get out uh, of your business for a moment? Yeah. And just do a little forest bathing, meditate, and get into flow. You'll be much more effective, much more uh, innovative in what you're doing. The creativity will begin to come out. You'll be happier, and yes. because you're happier, the people around you are happier. Uh, it's infectious, so you'll have a nice happy staff that's working for you and tell them to go out and forest bathe occasionally. And put little post-it notes on your computer saying, turn me off and go stretch and breathe. Take some nice, slow, even breaths through your nose, five seconds in, 
and then five seconds out. And just mm -hmm. doing that for a few times will get you rebooted from any stress that's going on around you. You know, that is really great. And and who doesn't need a little stress relief, especially in today's world? Absolutely. And, you know, today we had a great, a great talk just about just uh, things that make you open. We've talked about marketing, uh, you know, but really we talked about the moment and really landing there um, to really think about the things that are most important, why we're doing what we're doing. I want us to consider just what is it that drives you? You know, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Some people, they do a job because they have to do a job. And, you know, I, I think about just uh, yesterday, I actually did a little post for, with my dad and it got kind of emotional. It just kind of mm -hmm. hit me because his memory is not there anymore. I mean, pretty much. I saw that it was very sweet. Yeah, and and you know, I thought I interview all these people. How wrong would it be to not interview my dad and capture the moments mm -hmm. while he's here? We had a lot of fun. Like my dad always tells the story. I've heard it literally twenty five <laughs> times. You know about how he was in the thing. He had two sticks. You know, kind of those ski sticks that he used for balancing. You mm -hmm. know, now not that he's going skiing and how somebody uh, was trying to attack him and he kind of wraps his arm around the, those little um, those little. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the little things that he, he didn't really fight and he ran away. He, he loves that story. <laughs> That's his hero story. How old and is he? He right now is 92. All right. And he used to teach Tai Chi. Okay. But, you know, I really think about it. At the end of the day, everything we accomplish, what's going to be the most important? It's the memor memories, the legacy that we leave behind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I want you to think about this. Now, the ancient Chinese secret, I promised I would tell you at the end. We talked about marketing. We talked about the moment. There's something still very important that you understand the relationship you have with it, and it's a thing that will drive your business. It will tell you how far your car can go or how long how long your car will last. You and what, what is that? Is? What is it? Drum roll, please. Are you ready? <laughs> there we go. It is what we talk about a lot. It is money. Money? Uh-oh. And, you know, I will tell you, your relationship with money drives everything. And here's what, um, what I say. I say, you know, with a lot of money, how many choices do you have? A lot of choices. All right. Do, is that a true statement? Yeah. Absolutely. With a little bit of money, how many choices do you have? Fewer. <laughs> Fewer. A little bit of choices. And check this out. With no money, what happens then? And you're really dependent on the earth and whatever comes along. <laughs> yeah, you're living you in the earth. Go out and eat weeds. You yeah, know, you, yeah. You go out and join a monastery someplace. <laughs> right. Well, basically, you know, a lot of choice, a uh, lot of money, a lot of choices, little money, little choices, no money. It's not that you have no choices even. It's that choices are chosen for you. Mm -hmm. If you're not paying for the gas, it's someone else's car. You know when you leave, you leave when they decide to leave, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a lot of money, if you have no money, they want to eat something, you want to eat something else, guess what you eat? You eat whatever is put before you. You know, some people are not able to live the life they want to. They don't have a choice. It's chosen for them exactly what it will be doing, what their day is going to be like. Maybe for some people, unfortunately, begging, that they have to be begging because they have to have the substance. So money is so very important. And, you know, I'm with a company called Exertus Financial Partners, also Factor X Financial. And, you know, we really teach principles on how money works. And so I want you to consider just what you're trying to accomplish in life. These, these things are very important to have the right marketing in place. You know, whether you're trying to find a wonderful catch, right, like yourself or yourself, or trying to really land some great business with some clients you want to work with, you know, or... You just want some peace, peace of mind. Being able to take those moments to, to really establish what really is important. But I'll tell you, you can have a great Ferrari. You can have a wonderful Porsche. You can have a, what's that word that begins with a B, a really nice car? Uh, not Lamborghini, because that begins with an L. Bugatti? Bugatti? Bugatti. 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 That's mm -hmm. it. Too many syllables for this Asian guy. But you know <laughs> what? You have Bugatti, but one thing I can guarantee you, that car no go if you have no gas. Mm -hmm. If you have no money to buy the gas, that car looks good, but guess what? It ends up going nowhere. I encourage you, take a look at these three things that are so very important. Ancient Chinese secret is you need money to drive whatever you're doing. So 
Many of us here in the San Joaquin area and different areas, guess what we say? It's not about the money. And I always remind people, well, let me ask you, whatever you're doing, if you had a million dollars, could you do it faster with uh -huh. a lot less stress? Yes, as you get older, you understand the significance of time. And so it does become about the money, not necessarily for yourself, but to be able to accomplish an objective. So I hope we've given you some great things to think about here today. Um, and I just wanted to make sure, I know some of you might want to reach Donna or Gary. Can you go ahead and give the best way to reach you? Maybe a website number? Yes, the website that we like to send people to because it has a lot of information and it's very interesting and there are free gifts on it that you can ask for by clicking on the free, free gift. Free. <laughs> it's neuroalchemyflow.com. Neuro Alchemy Flow. So as you Google that to figure out how you spell neuro and then alchemy. N-E-U-R-O <laughs> and then alchemy is A-L-C-H-E-M-Y-F-L-O-W flow.com. Great. And I love the fact that you, you guys work very well together. And that's what the world needs is people that really can uh, really enjoy the moment you know, with that special someone. So I think it's great, you know, um, in terms of what we've talked about here today. And uh, we've had some great discussion here. Um, you know, any final, final thoughts? Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I wasn't uh, sure what to expect. Yeah. Donna just dragged me out of bed this morning and said, we're going to go talk. Right. <laughs> and I said, okay. Yeah. And you know what? In Walkstar Karaoke, guess what we're going to have to sing? What? Uh -oh. I know a girl. Oh, Donna not that one. Name, right? <laughs> oh, Don't even know that one. Donna. <laughs> well, anyway, there are so many things that we can uh, achieve and accomplish in life. Let's get busy. Let's get to work and enjoy the dream. But you know what? At some point in time, you got to wake up and take action. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, along with Donna and Gary. And catch us next time on Tuesday, 11 a.m. on Walk the Talk. 105.5.